What is going on viewers of YouTube Sunspot here and I am back with you guys with my review of the Toys R Us exclusive Bandai Legacy Collection Power Rangers Movie 2017 Pink Rangers 7 inch collectible figure. As per usual, I do want to highlight the box. Really, again, nothing special. Sabon's Power Rangers, the Bandai logo there. The Build-A build -a Megazord. I, I was about to say build a figure. That's... Oh, that's a ton twister. Um, the background you can actually take out and use as a backdrop, which is pretty cool. I usually tend to keep these, so just a heads up. And Legacy Collection Pink Ranger, the Toys R Us logo, and this very pretty image of Kimberly in her suit of armor and not latex, I guess. Which is a bit odd, but hey, these designs are... You know, they're very different than the original. And uh, taking a look at the side of the box, continues that... Pink streaks of lightning, as well as Kimberly's shoulder there. Other side of the box, nothing too much. Top of the box, again, those pink lightning bolts, as well as the movie Power Rangers logo, not the original, per se. And uh, this is just pretty, you know, it's pretty much useless here. But the back of the box does highlight some important stuff, like all the other figures in the wave, including the chicken version of Alpha 5, my god, what did you do to him? And what did you do to this Megazord, which I'll be reviewing shortly. So, yeah, that's just about it for this pretty generic packaging. Les for the figure herself. She is actually pretty cool, although I'm not too big a fan of the mold just because it's a little bit too skinny. It's still a neat figure. I'm going to give you guys a simple 360 here, just showing off the figure. I think it looks good for the most part. Um, I'm not a big fan of this spine mold here, like I said in the Red Ranger review, but still, I think it's a pretty solid figure overall. And the proportions are really nice. You can obviously tell it is a female form, duh. It's just here in the legs, It's I think it's a little bit too skinny. I think they should have made the thighs a bit larger and gave her... Uh, I guess a skinnier waist and uh, make the upper torso a little bit bigger just to get that slim female form because she kind of just looks like a skinny robot in the suit and maybe that's how she looks in the movie. I really didn't get a close look at her but as far as a toy mold goes I think that would just be a little bit smoother. As for the head sculpt, I am a little bit disappointed here. Although she has a pretty strong resemblance to the original Kimberly the Pink Ranger from the uh, 95 cartoon as well as the movie. There's something about this that really doesn't click for me and I honestly think it's these pink, uh, I don't know exactly what to call them, these, just, these lines just diving into the middle of her visor. Now I know that really kind of talks to her original predecessor, the original costume, but I think it should have been cut in half at least. I think these spikes or whatever they are, I think they should have not gone all the way to the middle here. I think they should have been cut off halfway through and that would have just made it a little bit more solid, but that's just my personal opinion. Giving you guys a 360 here, a great, great mold for sure. You could tell they put a lot of definition into this sculpt. I think it's really great. Uh, for the most part, I like how it has the Deadpool little sock droopy thing there on the top of her head, which is kind of, yeah, I do have a little molding issue right there. So, and uh, yeah, here is the mouth plate, I guess is what you can call it. Definitely accurate. The original Power Ranger costumes, or the helmets at least, had uh, a much smaller uh, mouth plate. So... This being a bit larger, showing more of the cheekbone and the cheek itself. I guess it's a uh, it's a nice a nice turn of things, a nice change of events here. And the top is very nicely molded into the pterodactyl, and from a lot of angles, it just looks really, really great. Not gonna lie. So A plus on the head sculpt, Bandai. And same goes for the rest of the figure. Once again, whoops! Once again. I will refer back to my Red Ranger review, and I'll do that a lot throughout this video. I do not like this. This blue power orb thing that all these Rangers got going on. It's kind of the theme in the movie. Honestly, I would have been okay if they just replaced, just got rid of that completely, actually. Not even replaced it, just 
get rid of that completely and replace it with those white triangle designs as well as give the Power Rangers their correct morpher mold or design rather because I don't see a pterodactyl on this where is my pterodactyl and where was the T-Rex on the damn Red Ranger instead it's this weird swirly mess with purple pink and yellow and obviously silver so ah, uh, I don't know about that but as far as the design goes I think it's pretty solid I do like all these gunmetal or silver tinted I guess uh, armor platings here. Uh, she has much less than the Red Ranger actually. Just a few tints right here on her chest, on her shoulder. Um, I don't know if this is movie accurate, but I would have preferred if this got extended so it looked like they were connecting. Like if it were like that, if I were to turn it like that. So that would have been nice. And uh, Some here on her stomach and on her torso as well. And yeah, I don't like this here. This really bothers me. It looks so creepy. It just doesn't look like a Power Ranger. It's so odd, and um, I don't know about this. Tell me what you guys think about this. The spine, it's just, it's odd to me. I don't know, and the rib cage here is even weirder. Um, just a few flaws I'm finding. And again, these are uh, personal opinion f related flaws. As far as the figure goes itself, it's a great mold, great engineering. Not the figure's fault. And just taking a look at her gauntlets and stuff. These are these little indentations are actually molded on. They're not painted, which is always nice. Do have some good sculpt on her hands. Not too much going on on the palms, but uh, something at least is there. And very robotic hands, actually. I wish they put some silver paint there or something. And uh, here is her torso. The Pink Ranger booty, of course. I like how they <laughs> molded in the butt crack. <laughs> oh my god, said the 20-year-old. Alright, looking at the rest of the figure here. Very nice. I wish they put some more paint apps. Maybe different shades of pink. Maybe a reflective pink would have been nice. And the back is so bare, guys. Ah, uh, I don't like that. I. They could have at least put some silver bits or something. Come on. Same with the front, too. It's just so bare bear and I like I actually like this kneecap here I like how it's split into the middle that I thought that was nice and uh, the boots here are her feet I guess great definition I like how they're actually boots <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool um, oh, it just makes me wish like that giant boot that all the other Rangers had back from the 90s just that white singular uh, shoe that was that was cool but Great mold and uh, decent paint apps could be better, but what can you do? Les for articulation. She is definitely, definitely super articulated. Um, I'm really impressed, actually. The only complaint I have is that she does not have a double-jointed elbow, which I'll get into here in a sec. But her head can look up pretty far up, which is always nice. Go down pretty far, look left, right, and can basically just do the 360. Arms can rotate fully, as well as go out and in. She does have the bicep rotation, which actually the Red Ranger didn't have. I just noticed that. That... That's actually awesome. Wish the Red Ranger had that. And she does have the uh, single jointed elbow, which I am not a fan of. They could have easily put a double jointed elbow, but damn it. And a fully articulated wrist can go up and down, left to right, any way you want. She does have the ab crunch here. It's... It's okay. I wish it would go forward a bit more. And her waist can rotate 360. Legs can go forward a lot. Can basically do a 90 degree angle. Back, really not that much because her butt's in the way. And she can definitely do the splits, which is always nice. She's a Power Ranger. She has to be flexible. Does have the thigh rotation. A double jointed knee, which is always appreciated. Feet can go forward back and of course she does have ankle pivot it's really not that strong of a pivot and she cannot stand very well at all so um, articulation is pretty decent as for size the pink ranger here stands at about seven inches tall if you don't believe me I do have my trusty tape measure here and she stands just at about seven inches so a pretty decent size and here she is next to her movie ranger counterparts i do have the yellow and black here Ooh, kind of matches my background i do like that um little bit of a gripe here 
she is supposed to be way shorter than all of these and she's definitely supposed to be shorter than the black ranger here because he's pretty damn tall in the trailer so i wish they kind of would have went the route of the star wars black series stuff and made these all completely completely in scale like the movie but this is what you get then here she is next to her 95 counterpart these look really great uh the color i just noticed ugh. I'm not liking this one so much anymore, the color scheme, or just the pink in general. It's kind of hinting towards a purple, so I definitely prefer her. Obviously, this is the superior pink ranger, and now that I look at it, I do take back my comment about these little spike thingies. For some reason, in my mind, I was picturing that uh, she had them too, just smaller. She doesn't actually, so that's why she looks odd to me, because the original didn't have that one, so there you go. And just looking just down, obviously very, very different figures, but... Still a neat adaptation and faithful to the original. And last but not least, I do have her next to a standard 12-inch figure. Might as well bring in Pepper Potts just to give that female perspective here. And uh, she stands at just about half her size. And here she is next to my alpaca. As for accessories, she has none. Unless you can count these Build-a-figure pieces, or, sorry, build-a-megazord pieces, whatever the hell you want to call it. She comes with the wings, something pretty damn lame if you ask me. These are, ugh, what can you do? You know, it. this is honestly just kind of disappointing. I wish they would have done more or something. Give us some kind of accessory, a morpher, a sword, anything. But, you know, this is her build-a-figure piece. And do have some... Uh, dark pink right here on the rims of the upper wing, and it's basically a standard pliable gray piece of plastic that just peg into the back of the finished Megazord, and yeah, definitely bare. So overall, I highly recommend you pick up this figure when she releases, and I think it's February 20th, I really, really gotta look that up, I'm pretty sure it's late February, about a month before the movie comes out, so... Even if you see her before the release date, I'm sure Toys R Us will, you know, sell them to you. They sold them to us. Uh, my brother actually got this whole way from me, and I bought them from him, and they let him um, buy it. So, I'm sure they'll let you buy it, too. If not, they're a bunch of a-holes, let's just be honest. But as far as the figure goes, it's a neat mold. It's faithful to the original, and it's definitely movie accurate. Could do some work on the paint apps. It's basically just a big hunk of pink plastic but i guess the gunmetal parts make up for it and with that said people if you did enjoy this video please like subscribe and comment check out my site at sunspotreviews.com and i will see you guys in my next video